What's up guys and welcome to episode number two of my archery whitetail hunt in New Jersey. I am from northwestern New Jersey no, uh, next to the Pennsylvania border and that's where I grew up and every year I travel back there and hunt. If this is your first time tuning in for this series, remember that there is number one, episode number one up already. So definitely be sure to watch them in order because they'll all go together and you'll kind of see how it all goes down. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy episode number two. Tell them to enjoy, Brookie. Girl, you sleepy girl, aren't ya? And I'm the one doing the homework. <laughs> All right, guys, made it to New Jersey. I just want to take a quick second to show you the essentials I'm taking hunting with me, and then we're going to get out there. First off, the On Track Outdoors No Mess Dress Kit that I'm always talking about and I always have on me. This is a women's one, and they have a men's sized one. They're super cheap, like way low price, especially if you use Bridget 10. And it has everything you need in it for a harvest. It's especially good for gutting deer. So I'm really, really excited to use that, hopefully, on a deer. This is just my camera case of the camera I'm using right now. I have my little stealth cam. Focus. I have my little stealth cam card reader. That's what I will use to check the SD cards of my trail cameras out there. I have a spare battery for my rangefinder, which is the Vortex 1800. The Ranger 1800. This thing is amazing. Always have a spare bed battery for your rangefinder. Um, that's just my release. My bow's still in the case. I have my Tazzy Tiger Knife. Let's see if I can open it. Woo! Tazzy Tiger Knife. I also have a discount with them, Bridget 10, and this you can get on Amazon. So you can literally get it for under $50 shipped free with Amazon Prime. And it's a really awesome fixed blade knife. I love it. I use it for everything. As you can see, it's well used, but it always holds its edge. And it comes in this leather sheath. All discount information with my partners is always below in the description box. I have a bunch of SD cards, gators, and last but not least, the Vortex Furies. These are rangefinders and binoculars. Really good glass on them, really easy to see. They are incredible, and that is the little case for them. And it's so cool that it rangefinds because you really don't technically need this and that to both rangefind, but those are just the binoculars I like to use. And I just like having my rangefinder on me too. You never know. You never know what it's gonna be.
What's up guys? Well, at least this morning was eventful to say the least. There ended up being a total of five does. One was actually a button buck and one small buck. And that buck is actually identical to the one I shot two years ago. Literally identical, it was weird. It was like seeing the one I shot alive again. But um, I set up another camera at the other spot to see what activity that one's getting. And I took an hour nap and I put out some more corn at both stands, so I was definitely very, very busy. But I feel good, have some more coffee to uh, wake me up after this nap and this crazy daylight savings time change. But now I'm getting out of here and getting to my stand. Hey guys, so just to give you a little bit of information since it kind of cut back and, floor, back and forth during the video and I didn't really tell you what was going on. My plan was to do an all day sit, but then in the morning I realized like, dang, the corn is getting low. So I went to the sporting goods store close by and bought some more corn, but all they had was the ground corn and my parents, this year really didn't help me out until too late getting the corn out there. Um, in the past years, the deer definitely had a better routine and this year the corn was just put up too late in my opinion and it started with the ground corn, you know, just not on the kernels and the problem was that hooked too many bears. I didn't show you guys a lot of bear trail camera pics yet, but they are coming later in the series and there's a bear on that corn like 10, 15, 20 minutes before I'm there every single day. There's a new pile of bear scat. So these bears got hooked to the corn and it's not super good when you're hunting deer because even though these black bears aren't necessarily 100% carnivores going after the deer all the time, the deer do not like to be around them. So there are some days and you'll see where this series where maybe it's slow and I wonder if it's because of the be fresh bear scat. Let me guys know if you have had any um, similar experiences with that. You may know that New Jersey is known for having lots and lots of black bears and we have very, very big black bears. Um, there used to be a time in my life where I trail ran every single day and I'd see a bear every single day, always running away from me. But I've grown up with them and I'm not afraid of them. I have a respect for them, don't get me wrong, but I also believe that animals sense fear and that you should not be afraid, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's easier said than done, but New Jersey bears in particular do not get me scared. Utah bears are less used to people, so I'm a little bit more afraid of them. They're more wild in my opinion. But anyway, so these particular days it was at least good to get that task out of the way get more corn out there so the deer are fed and then some does came in and i had to wait a really long time in the dark for those does to go away that came in at last light because i did not want to spook them and it worked out because eventually they did go away and i was able to get out of my stand and go get some dinner with my brother i think on that day we got pizza which is my favorite thing to get when I'm back east in my hometown. <sighs> but I want to talk about one more thing, and that is the hunting over bait. I really don't care how you hunt as long as you do everything that's legal and ethical and respectful, and hunting over corn in New Jersey is well used. Almost everybody that I know does it, and it's legal, it's been legal my whole life. And that's the way we do it. And during the rut, it's actually not about shooting bucks over corn. It's about bringing the does into the corn really more than anything else because the bucks are out looking for does. 
and every single time I've ever shot a buck hunting this same week in November, it's been because the buck has come into doe scent and then later sees the corn and is like, maybe I'll eat the corn now that I'm here, you know? But you can just tell, I can just tell by the way they come in sniffing and walk right to the tree where my doe scent is. I've just noticed that. So there's always a couple people that really hate on the hunting over corn life. And you know what? I really don't care. I respect your decisions and you should respect mine. Hunting is not easy no matter which way you do it. That's all I got to say. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for episode three coming out very, 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 very soon.